everyone. Welcome to the Pinball Workshop. Today we're going to talk about some routine and regular maintenance for pinball machines. So part of the uh, basement you've not seen yet, all my workshop stuff is way over there and it's actually a complete mess I need to fix. So while I'm being lazy about that piece, I want to get these games ready to go. I've got some friends coming over and I want to go through some of the key things that I do to get these games ready uh, for friends to come and play. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Routine and regular pinball maintenance. Let's get started. A couple things before we get started. Uh, what the primary goal of this is, is really a couple things. One, I want to make sure uh, I, I haven't played uh, my World Cup soccer in a while. I want to make sure that, well, number one, everything's working correctly. Uh, switches are working. Uh, I don't see any um, other issues from a gameplay perspective that's happening. Uh, I want to also then uh, go ahead and clean the play field, clean the glass. Uh, and as well as also check uh, the pinballs themselves. So those are the first things we're going to be doing. And to get started on that, the first thing we need to do is take the glass off. If you're new to pinball or you've never worked on a pinball machine before, the first thing you're going to have to do is not only getting access to the coin door, uh, but also is that there should be some sort of lever that's available that actually releases the lockdown bar. So since we haven't covered this before at the pinball workshop, let's just kind of walk through a, some of the general uh, disassemblies to get to, you know, to get inside the machine. Uh, all machines uh, of a certain era, so all the way back to the, you know, late 50s, early 60s, uh, so anything in the, what we call the traditional electromechanical age, uh, all the way up to solid states today, have what we call a lockdown bar. The lockdown bar primarily does two things. One is that it actually helps trap the glass on top of the, uh, the cabinet, as well as not allows, um, users to access the inside of the machine. Uh, you'll find that, and this will change between manufacturers, but there'll be some sort of lever that you'll be able to pull. And by pulling this lever, this will allow the release of the lockdown bar. It's always important, you can see here in my glass here, there's actually a, a piece of Invisiglass and it's actually starting to slide. So always important to make sure to push that up and, and make sure that doesn't, uh, interfere with you. But you can see with this lockdown bar, um, you can see it's got some pretty thick uh, little brackets. This is actually what engages right there. And this is what actually, um, like I said, help keeps the glass and the machine secure for uh, route operators. Now, once I've done that, you can see the glass is now free. I usually like to uh, push the uh, coin door back closed just so it won't get caught up on the glass as I take the glass out. Now this glass, as you can see, it's starting just to magically slide by itself. I'm gonna have to move the camera a little out of the way. And all you wanna do is just lightly allow the glass to come out. If you're finding that your glass is sticking or um, it, 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 you're having to maybe put a little bit of effort into that, you need to be very, very careful with this. Um, now this glass is a little bit different being Invisiglass, but most if not all pinball glass is tempered glass. And what that basically means is um, uh, it's a little bit different than like your single pane glass that what you would think about. Uh, so what this means is that it's very strong in terms of on top of the glass, but in terms of it's uh, uh, on the sides or if it getting flexed a certain way, really it's much more brittle. So anytime that you're taking a pinball glass out, always be careful and try not to rush. Uh, if you do and you break a glass in one of these, it's a lot of not, it's not a lot of fun. So always try to avoid that whenever possible. Final thing with the glass, make sure to lay it somewhere out of the way so that you won't trip on it or anyone else that's helping you out won't trip on it as well. Now, before I get to cleaning, my next step is I want to just do a general inspection of the top side of the play field. So what I'm going to be looking for here is anything that looks odd or weird or maybe issues on the play field, whatnot. Now, I actually have some cliffies uh, that are starting to kind of come up and not sit flush to the, uh, to the play field. Let me actually take this off so you can see. So this may be something that I want to fix later. I'm probably not going to fix it now. but uh, So I've got some cliffies here that you can see are not sticking or not really laying flush here. So what I may am doing is replacing this or taking this cliffy off, maybe putting a piece of mylar around this, then this, uh, this cliffy. And you'll see that here as well. It's just that 
that that has just lost its stick. And there's not a lot of stick there for these little cliffies, uh, but that's something that I may want to uh, want to work with. But the other thing I want to look at here is just kind of visually go over the machine. I'm looking at switches, nothing. I want to make sure there's nothing that's um, uh, you know wrong or anything that looks out of place. Uh, most everything just looks really dirty, and that that's about what I expect. But um, it's important to always spend a little bit of time looking over your machine, looking inside, uh, really just getting a chance to make sure if there's anything else that may need to be addressed. One thing you can also tell here is definitely got a little bit of wear and definitely got some, yeah, it's definitely dirty. So I want to be able to clean all that up as well. Um, so before I get started here and before I start cleaning, uh, the next thing I'll do is take my inspection to inside the machine and again looking for very similar things. So, add a ball, we'll capture the ball. Now, I will say that if you saw that ball was loose here, um, you can put a towel to something from stopping your balls flying to the back. You could also be not lazy and take the balls out. I'm gonna be lazy for a moment, so judge me if you will. So I've got a handle on the ball so that they're not going to fall out. So again, here I'm inside the machine now. Valley Williams um, has uh, some, some of these very interesting uh, hinges. Uh, all machines and all manufacturers are very different. So just make sure that you realize that when you're ever working on a machine. I can just slowly stand this all the way up. Just continuing to hold on to make sure that the, you don't have balls that are falling Way so let me pull this back out. So again, here is the underside of the playfield for World Cup soccer. Um, here, what I'm looking for is really a couple things that always take a lot of abuse. So I'm looking primarily at flippers. Here's our our two flipper assemblies. We see here uh, right here is our end of stroke switch. Uh, that could use maybe a replacement here soon. Uh, I can also look up into this one. Eh, that doesn't look too bad. Yeah, just really dirty. So uh, I, I'm just looking here. I see here's my magnet. Uh, everything else looks relatively good. There is a there is a level of dirt, uh, you know, on the harness. As I see here, you can definitely see there's definitely just a level of that mechanical dust throughout here. Um, so that may be something I I may want to change out uh, in the future. You can see here's actually a new motor for the uh, for the soccer ball that was put on. Uh, by the prior owner before I bought it. But you can definitely see that, you know, besides just having just a, a general layer of, of, of mechanical dust, I'm not seeing else anything that's unplugged. I don't see any frayed wires. I don't see anything that's touching awkwardly. These are the types of things you want to look for. Um, again, it's just, you know, a, a general viewpoint uh, that you want to be able to make and make sure everything is set up appropriately. I also want to make sure and check down below in the cabinet. So again, I want to be careful if you've never worked on a pinball machine before. Uh, definitely things are on the transformer and where the mains line comes in. That is the electricity that can harm you. So if you're unfamiliar with work like this, make sure your machine's unplugged, not turned on. Uh, but really what I'm looking for here is anything in the bottom of the cabinet, uh, pieces of assembly, screws, nuts, washers, anything that may have gotten loose and that has dropped to the bottom of the cabinet. And you may be wondering, well, why, Adam, do I need to look for things like that? And really what I'm looking for, maybe something has broken and we just don't see it in the assembly, and then we need to do a little bit more, you know, investigation. But nothing at the bottom of my cabinet today, nothing really at the, in the, on the underside of my play field that I, I care about to fix. So at this point, I'm just ready to just go ahead and start my general cleaning. So to start that, I'm going to go ahead and put the play field back down. One thing I do want to show, uh, if you're ever having to mess with the play field, uh, lifting it, lowering it, always make sure that your, your hooks here always are sitting in very, very good to this lockdown bar. Again, this is the same lockdown bar assembly piece that actually uh, takes the... Uh, 
takes the acceptance of the, the, the physical lockdown bar and then holds it in place. But a lot of times when you're working on a machine, you may not get these things uh, uh, really hooked into place and that'll cause your play field to, to be a little wobbly, not leveled appropriately and could lead to some wonky stuff later. So always make sure you got that down. Now let's talk about some key things that we use for cleaning. Now this is gonna surprise a lot of people, but the first thing is I use is an ammonia-free glass cleaner. Now, the reason why I use this is because what I really wanna do is just to get the surface level dirt off the top of the machine. Uh, so if I, you see there's a little bit of dirt on my fingers there from the play field. So that's really what I wanna try to do is just kinda of get that area all uh, completed. Uh, now, if I feel like that I've put on a heavy wax or I've purchased a machine that has some heavy wax and I want to help clean that off, I can use also something like naphtha to help clean the play field. It really, your mileage is going to vary there depending upon what you're trying to do, what you're trying to clean. Uh, in terms of wax, so uh, I will say there's a lot of folks that... Uh, have their own process of cleaning. This is my process. This does not make it the best, most right process ever. I do like using the uh, Meguiar's Gold Class uh, Carnuba uh, Plus Wax. A uh, couple reasons why I like this. Number one, it's easily attainable. So local um, auto parts stores near me sell this. Uh, it also leaves a um, does not leave a very heavy, thick white film. Uh, when I spread this out. So I, I'm, I'm really a fan of this stuff. It cleans up very well. Uh, I've used this uh, I've used this now for the last year or so. Uh, I like this better. Do not skimp on the kind of wax you buy. Um, if you look on other forums for pinball, you'll find a thousand different things uh, that are available. Uh, this is one of the ones that gets brought up a lot. There's also another one, I can't think of the name at the moment, but I'll put the picture right here that people use as well, uh, that also I hear uh, works really well. So the last thing is I'll do is, um, um, before I get started cleaning, I may just take a look over my ramps. Um, I've got some that could use a flame polishing. Uh, I'm gonna post uh, that video right up here if you've not seen my flame polishing video. But I think for today, I, I, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Uh, for my friends that are coming over, I just wanna get it clean and playing fast. So. Uh, let's go ahead and start working on cleaning the play field. All right, so I feel pretty good about that. I know there's probably folks saying, but Adam, you didn't get here, and you didn't get right there, and you didn't actually get, actually get the orbit lane. And yeah, I gotcha. Um, this game probably could use a shop next year. So really what I'm looking to do this year is just get it clean so that um, we get good gameplay. So that's kind of what I'm looking for right now. I'm not really looking for a full shop job. It's just to kind of give it a nice cleanup and let it go from, from there. Um, so you check the, that's pretty good. Okay, so now I'm gonna do is on my application wax. I do use the little applicator pad that come with them. I know people like these, don't like these, but for me, that's fine for my use. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of uh, our, our uh, wax, kind of build up into the pad and then just start applying. Now one thing again here, I talk about the wax and you can see this wax goes on almost invisible. It's very, very light um, and it will actually dry a little bit wider, but it will not leave much of a residue. And that's why I think, so if I do miss it or it gets in a crack in a crevice that, you know, it's hard to get to, 
I, I don't have to worry as much about that um, as I would with uh, uh, other waxes that exist. So I would definitely start with a wax that if you look up online or you have a friend that will clean play fields or always check with that person first because they've probably already done a lot of the hard work. So my phone ate the rest of the video and I apologize. But as we can look here, I went ahead and got my layer of wax down. You can actually see that here in the, in the glistening across the game itself. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I, I took it to a point that was easy to get to. You know, this right here is really hard to get back to this orbit lane without having to remove the, the plastic ramps. Uh, you know, the plastics here, really hard to kind of get in here to actually get any wax without getting weird buildups and, and cracks and crevices. So I, I'm really just trying to hit the high areas here that I think is the most important for gameplay, that looks the nicest. And again, just some routine regular maintenance uh, that I think that is going to continue to let this game play as good as possible. Um, I did mention, I think in the part of the video that got erased on my phone, is that this game is going to need a full top shop uh, probably next year. So expect that for folks that are interested in that coming. I'm not looking forward to taking the four to five layers of stuff in the back <laughs> off i know it's this game is really kind of a, a booger to shop out so uh but for the most part this is going to get me um here in the next couple hours for my friends come over and allows us to have a, a nice playing clean game uh to work forward from there now we talked a little bit about one other thing to do and that is obviously checking um uh you know our balls that are in the game so if i can just uh i'll just mainly ejectable balls so what I'm looking for here is, and this focus, I'm looking for on the balls themselves, I'm looking for pitting, any signs of rust, you know, what does it look like there, you know, if I'm seeing a lot of, of marks or strike marks on the balls, these actually seem to be kind of okay. They're not the clean, they're not the clearest in the world, but I've put these in within the last... I don't know, it's probably been three months since I've last changed out the balls. So I think right here, I, and this is what I was kind of thinking for this game, I think I'm probably okay. Um, but if you're starting to see what I call pitting on the balls, where it looks like the balls aren't very smooth or clean, or you're not getting this, you actually can see their high thumb in the reflection there. If you're not seeing anything like that, um, they're, they're really needs to be replaced. Uh, I have folks that say, hey, I put these balls, I'll put them in a tumbler, I'll buff them. Yeah, you can do all that, but really, I, I think of pinballs as a consumable item of a pinball machine. You just need to go order you some new ones um, and, and get them. You're just gonna, they're gonna be better off. So I'm gonna drop them back in the game, uh, ready to play. So while I'm letting this game uh, just kind of sit here for the time being, uh, I, I've, I've cleaned it. I know everything in the back box is good to go, but I've cleaned it. I've, I've, I've got the wax sitting. Uh, getting ready to dry out. I'm going to turn my attention over to Lord of the Rings. I'm going to do the same thing. So uh, I will leave you this part of the video and I will come back once this one is ready to uh, take the wax off. Okay, so it's been about an hour, hour and a half, two hours or so uh, that I initially waxed the World Cup soccer. Now I'm ready to make sure before I remove the wax that it's set and ready to be removed. Um, so what I do is um, just kind of very uh, lightly touch it if I feel a tackiness that like it's trying to stick to my fingers, that means it's not cured, it's not ready to go. But this is feeling very, very good, like it's ready to go. So uh, the only thing now that I need for this is a nice lint-free microfiber cloth. You can find these Harbor Freight, Amazon, you can buy them in big packs. I have a ton of these. Also make sure, you know, these are easily washable. I have a whole rag jar that I'll just take upstairs and wash them when I'm ready. But what I'm gonna do now is actually clean up the wax. And so let's see what happens. So as we start cleaning up the wax, we will start seeing it come off. It's a little brown. Uh, you'll see you start, start to see some extra dirt uh, may start to pop off. And if not, you'll just get uh, just the residue of the extra wax that's not uh, it's not uh, come up there. So you can see that there, a little extra with a little dirt with that as well. And what I want to do is just make sure I keep uh, um, rotating the cloth. I want to always make sure that I'm 
choosing a very clean part of the cloth um, to, to take up any of the wax residue that's left over. Uh, I don't want to, I want to make sure to get everything off and everything clean. Now, see, I've got a little bit extra. I'll just flip it over and continue to get the rest of it off. All right, so you're definitely seeing a lot of extra dirt and grime coming off, and I can definitely see a difference now that I've uh, spent some time on this. It's really starting to shine. Because who doesn't love teal in a pinball game? Except for all the haters on pin side. You know who you are. All right, so that's really it. So let me grab my camera here, show you a little bit closer on the game. So one way you can always try to do it is with some overhead lighting, you could really see now that the shine that was put on to the playful there, you can see the shine, really, really came back to life and being very dull with the dirt and whatnot. So, um, you know, I feel like here I've got a pretty good, um, pretty good coverage on it. I mean, Playfield's in great shape anyway, and I don't have any extra residue. So you can see right here, thing here with the the pop down buttons on the stars. These, if you use a more of a traditional wax or a cheaper wax, you'll get these. Uh, will get all gummy, uh, lots of residue around these. And when you buy a little bit higher quality of wax, you won't get that as much. So. There's actually not really any there, but I think came out pretty well. Still need to fix these cliffies, but uh, I'm not necessarily too concerned at the moment about that. So all in all, I've got that one done. Uh, I will say that Lord of the Rings over here uh, was much more dirty. Uh, this game gets played. This is the favorite game in the house. Gets played a lot. Uh, so this game was much more dirty than our uh, World Cup Soccer. So the final thing to do before we uh, we wrap up here, any changes you've made or anything that you've done before you put the glass on and clean the glass and all that, it's just always easiest to turn the game on. You want to make sure the game works and that everything powers on appropriately, especially if there's anything else that you've moved or you've changed. Uh, you just want to make sure that all that works. Don't need to really play a full game per se, but just make sure a game will start. Yes. And that soccer ball is as loud as you think it is. And that is actually really normal. There we go. So really please, again, the great thing about general maintenance on a pinball machine like this is if you do it right and you continue to keep up with it, you'll never have to worry about a, a giant tear down as we go into ball search. That you'll have to worry about that second end of things. So always feel great, always feel uh, great to spend the time cleaning up a machine and it will save you a lot of trouble in the future. So with that, that's going to be the end of our video here. Uh, last thing that I'll do is I do want to make sure to take my glass cleaner and clean off both front side and back side of this uh, glass. Slide it back in, put our lock bar back down, and we'll be good to go. So with that, uh, this will do it for the pinball workshop. If you have any questions, leave those down below, and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks. Have a good day.